Er, when I was preparing for this uh, interview, I came across um, a, uh, a, a line from Dr. Woodson, which said that if war is the dark side of the human experience, military medicine is the hope and the light. And what I, what I want to talk about is some of the medical innovations that uh, you folks have championed over the last 12 years. Um, what, what, what has happened? Where are these innovations? And how have they translated into the civilian world? When you, when you look at uh, the advances in military medicine, uh, again, that come out of, uh, like you said, the dark side, which is conflict and wars, um, the, the, the incredible advances, um, you know, that, that have moved medicine forward uh, are, are driven by, again, the, you know, the, the dedication um, you know, by our healthcare professionals, you know, uh, whether it's, you know, leave, you know, leave no soldier, sailor, airman behind, you know, um, you know, uh, as I, as I tell folks, you know, you know, you, you've got to do everything you can, uh, you know, to ensure that those soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, you know, get home to their families. Uh, and then if they don't, you make dang sure that you did everything you could. Um, but, but this conflict in particular has, has, has really driven, uh, particularly combat casualty care and, 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 and trauma care delivery to a, to a level that's never been seen uh, anywhere to include our nation mm -hmm. uh, back home. Um, there was a group of folks, that, again, that were, that were very, very innovative, uh, strategic thinkers. Uh, this is one example uh, that, that were, uh, that, that nucleus of folks that was, that was uh, down at uh, San Antonio Military Medical Center, down at Wolford Hall and the Brook Army Med Center, uh, that that proposed what we call the Joint Trauma System. Mm -hmm. uh, this was back in uh, 2005, and, and 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 what they did was was they took uh, the the stovepiped entities out there. One was pre-hospital care, hospital care, and in route care, and brought all those guys together to build a continuum of care uh, that that is never before been seen to date. And, and so, so there were several, several things that came out of that. Uh, one was, uh, was uh, in the pre-hospital care, what we call tactical combat casualty care, the recognition, uh, again, each war has its significant, his, his, uh, its significant injuries. And this one was, you know, the IED. And so we mm -hmm. were seeing, uh, you know, folks that were getting these uh, pretty uh, pretty uh, serious, uh, you know, blast injuries, but uh, which which can go both ways. One, you're going to get uh, uh, tr traumatic brain brain injury, but you're also going to get trauma, which in in a form of amputations. And and what they saw was, um, you know, you can secure the airway and, and get them to breathe, but if they bleed out, mm -hmm. so so that that rapid recognition that something as simple as a tourniquet mm -hmm. will save a soldier, sailor, airman, and marine's life, and that rapid application. And so, so what we saw was, you know, it's not just the medic carrying the, the tourniquet. It was every soldier, sailor, and airman carrying. So in fact, a lot of these tourniquets, and there are stories out there where folks put their own tourniquet on. Absolutely. You know, something as simple as that. And then, and then, and then what we saw was this whole, um, uh, what I call development of damage control surgery and damage control resuscitation by our trauma community. And, and we were, we were, we kind of went into the war 10 years ago where, where we used a lot of saline solutions. And now we've come out of this war. It's, it's, it's what's the, it's what's the right mix of blood products. So we completely turned the, what we call the resuscitation paradigm upside down. 